All right, guys, so here we have the PCM60X solar charge controller. These are made by MPP Solar. Um, and I have three of these I will be installing back in my new battery shed. But before I can get these installed, we need to address how we are going to connect our wiring conduits to this faceplate that goes at the bottom of the controller. There's a big problem with this faceplate, and uh, I consider it a design flaw, but I don't know if that's necessarily what it is. And that is, once you attach conduits to these holes down here at the bottom, you can no longer pull this faceplate down. So if you're using a standard EMT, there's definitely no room for bending. You know, once you mount it, it's not going to move at all. Uh, even if you use flex conduit, now this wasn't really a problem before because I had just had the wire running through the hole with no conduit, so when I removed the plate, the plate would slide down over the wire like so. But now that I want to wire conduits to this, once I put the conduit on and fish the cable through, I can't pull this down to make the connections up here. I've had some people tell me, okay, just either don't use conduit or place the conduit in the opening, that way you can slide this down over the conduit. And that's just not good enough for the, uh, the standards I'm trying to build this to. So I thought that, okay, that's not that bad. I can take a saw and just cut this plate right along the seam and cut it in half. And I did that as you see here. And then I ran into a second problem, and that is the standard half-inch conduit will not fit through these holes that are pre-drilled on this enclosure. Now this is made in Taiwan, and the majority of the rest of the world uses metric, so I assume these are probably just metric size conduit openings. Now the fairly standard conduit in the U.S. is this half-inch. So that's also not a problem. I thought, okay, I'll just widen the holes. You can see I widened two holes over here. However, to go on further, you'll see once the conduit fitting is installed, it sticks over into the adjoining conduit hole, so you can't fit two conduit fittings next to each other. So if you take a look here, you'll see how this kind of solves the problem, because now when I put the fitting through, I could put my fitting nut, and then I have room to fish the cable through and can work with my hands in here to uh, fix it to the lug up here. And then when I'm done, I'll just put a separate covering over this, and this will be my access panel to get into these connections. I won't have to remove the conduit each time I want to check or change these connections. So the only thing I can come up with is I pretty much made my own uh, conduit cover plate, if that's what you want to call it. So this is 16 gauge steel. I just picked a sheet of it up at Lowe's. So yeah, there's two half inch holes on each side, and there's a three quarter inch hole in the middle. So this fits perfectly on the bottom of the charge controller, and then it allows me to fish one number four wire to the battery positive through the half inch conduit. And then in the three quarter inch conduit, I can fish a number four negative for the battery, a number six negative for the solar, and then the remaining half inch conduit will be a number six positive for the solar. And I'll likely fish a number 10 grounding wire through this half inch over here as well. Now I won't know until I try to fish the wires in, but I should be able to actually fit these plastic insulative bushings as well and uh, still have enough room to pull the wire through and make the connection here. Uh, but we'll see how that goes when we get to that step. And this is the steel sheet I picked up at the hardware store. And since I've already got one of these made, this is going to be a lot easier now. I'm just going to use this as a template. Um, obviously, if you're doing this for the first time, you won't have one of these made. So what I did was I held it up both to the original plate and to the front of the controller and just kind of judged where I wanted the fittings to go. And to cut this, I'm going to be using the same uh, DeWalt jigsaw that I used on my electrical enclosure. It is a 5.5 amp DW317 with a thin metal 24 teeth per inch blade. Safety glasses as always. So yeah, apparently that uh, blade was pretty dull. So we're gonna try this again with a fresh blade. All right, so that didn't go very well. Uh, I think that blade was dull from many previous cuts, and I just had to change up the blade and then it cut fine after. However, there is a uh, miscut, if you want to call it, on the bottom of this particular plate. But this is the part that will go towards the back and nobody is ever going to touch or see once it's installed, so we're just going to use it as it is. That way we are not being wasteful. Now to drill the hole for the conduit fitting, 
I'm going to use this knockout punch set. Now, I picked this up on eBay. Um, however, it is Pittsburgh brand, which interestingly is Harbor Freight's brand. So I'm not sure if this is a Harbor Freight tool that somebody was selling or not, or what the deal is. But uh, So the smallest die here will be for the half inch opening that we're going to be drilling. And that goes with the smaller bolt. So the way this works is you have a smaller die here that actually has the cutting edges on. And this larger, uh, I don't know what you would call it, the, the die mount or holder or whatever you want to call it. Um, so we'll take this bolt and we'll put the die holder. We'll then insert this bolt through the metal and we'll twist on the cutting head from the other side. Um, at that point, I'll use a ratchet to tighten this bolt down, which will pull this cutting die through the metal into this receiver over here and punch a perfectly round clean hole in the metal for the conduit fitting. So first we'll need a hole drilled that's the size of this bolt. And I'm just going to use a standard stepping drill bit for this. Now we'll put the bolt through the hole and we'll thread on our cutting die from the bottom. And the nut size on this is a 15 16 inch. And I can tell it's through because it suddenly got a whole lot easier to twist. So just back out our bolt here. And this cutting die can be a, pit, a bit of a pain to remove. However, I found that a standard pair of vice grips does a pretty good job. So, okay. And there's our first of three holes. You can see it's nicely clean cut. There's not much of an edge to it. And the conduit fitting fits in perfectly. And we can thread our nut from the back. All right, so I got two more holes to punch. All right, so uh, this is about done. Uh, but before we call this done, I do want to paint it just to make it look nice and prevent it from rusting since I don't think this is stainless steel, I'm not sure. Um, so first I'm going to hit it with a little bit of Pour 15 metal prep. And this will just etch the metal a little bit and get it ready to uh, be painted. And then just a quick coating of Rust-Oleum uh, flat black. And I think I'm just supposed to let this sit for about 10 minutes and then uh, rinse it off. All right, I'll be back out here to spray this once more, probably in about five minutes since it is uh, very warm and very sunny, uh, just to ensure the surface stays wet. All right, so here are the final products. They look very nice. They have a nice, it's both dull and kind of shiny at the same time. Uh, I guess that's what a satin finish is. And I just sprayed two coats on both sides. So here's one installed in the charge controller with a conduit fitting already in. Uh, you can see it's got a perfect fit. It looks good and it solves the problem of how to affix conduits to your controller and still have access to the terminals inside. And here's just a view of how that looks from the top. Yeah, this is a perfect solution for the problem at hand. If you found this helpful or interesting, please don't forget to hit that like button down below. In the next video, we will finally begin installing components in the shed um, and hopefully begin some of the wiring. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later.